Good night, Harold. While I was out there having my smoke, I saw this, this weird guy down the street. I think he was in front of the Austins. He was wearing a cloak or a robe or something, just standing there under the street light. It was, it was weird. Sounds like a ghost. So that's what smoking will do to you, Harold. It's a result of nicotine poisoning. Hardy har, Elaine. He was just standing there, not moving a muscle. <sighs> Good night, Harold. I have a very early meeting tomorrow. Thanks for listening, as always. Has anyone seen my laptop? Perry, have you seen my briefcase? That's where my laptop should be. I haven't done anything with any of your stuff. I haven't seen any single solitary thing of yours in forever. Katie, have you seen it? No, Mom. It's just great. I've got that presentation with the Boardman group in an hour and I can't find any of my damn stuff. It's probably where you last left it, at work. No, I put it in the car when I got off work. Then look in the car. Ugh. It was in the car. <laughs> Told you. Have a great day, both of you. Um, Harold, the dry cleaner's called. Your stuff's been there for over two weeks. Right. I'll be outside, sweets. Be ready in a sec, Dad. looks peachy to me. I think we can call this a wrap. I think they're going to like what they see. Nice job, Kathy. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, good job. And thank you. I think we can use the same report to Nielsen Company. What do you guys think? You're probably right. We'll tweak that up a bit and then revisit it on Thursday. Great. Well, I have a 10.30, so I'll see you two troublemakers this afternoon. Thanks, Kathy. Shut the door on the way out, would you please? Thanks, Kath. So you gonna make it there tonight? Yeah. How long does he need me again? I talked to him last night. Said, you know, no more than an hour. He just wants to put some name on a face. You know, maybe some additional instructions, something like that. You okay with this? Yeah. But it's just kind of an unnatural act what I'm about to embark on. I understand. You'll get used to it. It's easy money, dude. Very easy money. You're not going to believe how easy it is. You're pushing your retirement up, way up, just for about a year. And after that, you sit back and you can relax, Harry. Nothing to worry about. You can finally reap the benefits of all your hard work now. Don't talk to me like a punk, Jake. Remember who you're reporting to on your day job. What bar stool? Not on my watch. Joe Cotton. Harry Marlowe. What do you have, fellas? Crown on the rocks. Harry, what's your taste? Gin and tonic, I guess. Coming right up. You nervous, Harry? No, I'm okay. You sweat bullets. No, really, I I'm fine. I'm a friend, Harry. I'm your friend. My cousin Jake offer up any details? Yeah, he said I uh, watch, wait, 
and ask no questions. Shallow, Harry. Quit smoking 11 years ago. Best thing I ever did for myself. Yeah. One of these days, it's just tough, you know. Now, if I could just give up on the women, or maybe settle down on just one. Eh? <laughs> no. I'm gonna be frank, Harry. I need an average Joe from the neighborhood to oversee my operations. This average Joe's gonna be a, a nobody. But a nobody with some valuable resources. Yeah, that's what Jake was saying. Now this nobody, first and foremost, has to be trustworthy. I can be trusted. I know. 732 Briarhurst Lane in Sugar Lane. Your wife Elaine works for Thames United. Your daughter Katie goes to Travis High School where she's a sophomore. You drop her off every morning at 745. And she catches a ride home with Mrs. Wilson at 3.30. We excel at due diligence. Right about now, dear old mother's returning home from a bridge game in Beaumont. I suppose. Enough on that. Now, can you dictate to me what your responsibilities are to my organization? About three days a week. I'm to receive an email to my personal Yahoo account, the one I supply to. It will contain a code word, or phrase, or numbers, and information on a special visitor in the approximate time he's to arrive. When he gets there, he repeats the code, and I take him to the storage room. He pulls his truck around to the loading dock, and he unloads the goods. When he's done, I lock the door. Good. You don't foresee any problems coming from any employees on this, do you? No. It's my business, and I've got the perfect spot that's out of sight and mind than any of my senior employees. But if they have any questions, I've got plenty of valid explanations. Excellent. Then what? 